Welcome to... <laughs> All right, in this segment, I'm going to talk about a musical instrument until it just gets too hot in this room. The hottest gear in the hottest room. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Half beast, half warlock, and it lets you do a little thing like this. All the abalone. All you haters out there, uh, I love the abalone. You know what, I'm gonna say it. I love all the abalone on it. I want more abalone on it. That's what I want. Because you know why? I'm one of those dumb guitar players that needs the fretboard markers. I need three, five, seven, nine, twelve. I had to think about it for a second because that's the kind of player I am. I'm a fretboard gazer. They didn't use enough abalone. I needed that. And actually, I brought over an extreme model, one of the BC Rich Extreme models to my, my friend's house. A bunch of guitar players over there. And uh, I won't name drop or anything, but one of the guys comes out and he, he looks at it and says, wow, this is an awesome guitar. Uh, he says, what is this inlay on the 12th fret? Sorry, BC Rich. Is it the Wilson ball from Castaway? And now I can't see anything else but the Wilson ball from Castaway. <laughs> so you know who you are that said it. And now all of you are going to see that and think about it. I'm sorry, guys. I had to, I had to say it. Anyway, so... I need, a, I need more abalone, by the way. Uh, okay, so flat black. I like flat black. I think it looks awesome. But I'll tell you, I don't always like the way it wears. And after years of usage, uh, any guitar is going to look different from the day you purchase it. But flat black sometimes wears a little bit more. Sometimes. These ones. These are eight years old, and, and that's the wear on them. So I figured, eh, well, I'd show you guys just for comparison's sake. So that's how it looks. Let's talk about the way it sounds. I'll tell you how it sounds. I will. I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> it sounds awesome. I, I have this Mockingbird Extreme up here. I'm pointing at it right now. I think the War Beast actually sounded better. And I don't know why that is. Some guitars just sound better than others. Uh, maybe it's the Floyd Rose over the Evertune. Maybe it's the Woods. Maybe it's the paint that's used. Maybe Flat Black sounds better. Maybe that's why they've used flat black and there's something there that I don't know about. I could see that, but it did sound a little bit better than my Mockingbird Extreme and that, that kind of bothered me a little bit because I love my Mockingbird. The Fishman Fluence pickups, they're voiced amazing. You can see a lot of videos on those. Uh, they, they're awesome pickups. They're now my favorites actually. I like them over everything else I've tried. So that's pickups, one knob, volume it's got a push pull it's not a coil tap it changes the voicing so it goes from the fishman fluence to i think an amg kind of emg kind of sound and then it's got a toggle so you can toggle between neck pickup 
bridge pickup. Doesn't get any easier than that. Somewhere in the middle, you can put it in the middle. And it's got a kill switch. The kill switch is my least favorite feature on this guitar. Um, I don't really see much use for it, unless you're playing Buckethead Tribute Band. Uh, all you kids playing the Buckethead Tribute Band in your air conditioned rooms, maybe that's for you, but not for me. That's not how I roll. Okay, let's talk about the Floyd Rose. I love the Floyd Rose. Uh, double locking. I didn't have to set anything up. Uh, I, just, I opened the box up and it was a little out of tune, I'm not gonna lie, but I didn't have to unlock the top. I tuned it down at the, uh, at the bridge and no tuning problems. Uh, intonation was good. And I took the bar for a ride just to see about tuning stability. And I'll tell you, it was pretty darn good. Pretty damn good. And so I dive bombed and the G came back about three cents out. Uh, that's pretty negligible if you ask me, but I figured I'd mention it. So there, I did. The tuners, I don't know. I don't know what they are. I, I don't have the guitar here with me right now. I could look it up, but I'm too lazy to do that. I'll just put it in the description. Uh, you'll see all the, the features and all the things that it is. Um, you'll see all the things that it is. Don't worry. What else we got? Neck through design. Oh, satin finish on the back. I got a guitar up here that has no finish, and I love that, but the thing about no finish is that, you know, it doesn't play the same as it does on day one. It feels so good on day one, and then months down the road, years down the road, it gets the gunk, and it feels a certain way that uh, you kind of attach to, but the satin finish isn't gonna do that. And I actually think that's beneficial because it kind of moves like it's unfinished, but it doesn't get all grimy and gunky like the unfinished neck does. So I think that's really cool. That's a good feature right there. If I were to upgrade anything on the guitar, I would say I would take this and I would buy all the Floyd upgrades. Brass claw, brass block, noiseless springs, titanium saddles, and then you have the metal guitar. God, it's hot in here. You have no idea, you guys. Uh, so, you know, you gotta have some room for improvements and it's a damn nice guitar. And if you want a guitar that looks like this, well, where else are you gonna go? I don't know. So there you go. That's hottest gear in the hottest room. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Cold puppy boy. Oh, 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 it's a pupsicle. Oh, you're such a cold puppy boy. Oh, you're a good one. <laughs>